Hey, Domestic Dawn, Josh Landers in the dungeon yet again. I uh, hope you guys are doing okay. It's 4th of July Eve, so we're all getting ready for the, the non-4th uh, non of July party that is going to be happening tomorrow. Um, but if you guys haven't noticed, where I live, it's, it's a fucking firecrackers wet dream, or I guess fireworks uh, connoisseurs wet dream. Uh, or I guess if someone who, who, who uh, sold those uh, products, right? Right now, it's, it's, they're, they're living it up. And I'm not in the South anymore. Um, this, is a, this is a state that does not allow firecrackers, fireworks. They don't allow much. They don't want emissions. Uh, my truck fucking failed a smog check a couple of weeks ago uh, for whatever reason because there was a, there was a, a light on in, on the console, on the dashboard. Uh, so it failed. So we, this is a state that doesn't allow shit. But what they do allow is fucking people at 3 o'clock in the morning somehow buying firecrackers, fireworks. I don't know where they get them from. Uh, probably shipped up from probably, I'm assuming, Mexico. Maybe there's some weird black market deal going on in this state. Uh, but they're getting them, and they're fucking popping them off. Uh, and we don't live in a gigantic city. It's like a mid-sized city. Uh, they're, they're... 3 in the fucking morning. Uh, so I'm just waiting to see what tomorrow is going to be. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a fire. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have to evacuate with COVID. Uh, and that we're just waiting for that shit to hit the fan. Um, so anyways, happy America Day uh, coming up tomorrow. So hopefully you made your cupcakes with red, right, whites, and blues. Hopefully you bought your Budweiser's uh, with an American flag on the, the can, uh, superimposed on the can. Uh, you know, just, let's just have a fun day. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? We're going to live like fucking Americans. We're going to barbecue. Well, not re real barbecue. We're going to grill on the shitty grill that I have outside uh, that once fell out of my truck when I was moving yet to another place. So it's a little beat up, but it still works. Uh, so we're going to grill probably some burgers. Shit, let's have some burgers and fries and some fucking slaw and potato salad, salad on the side. We'll make it real fucking American tomorrow. Um... And it's fine. Celebrate. We gotta celebrate. We gotta do something. Say hi to your neighbors over their fence. Uh, can't talk to them face to face, but at least we can see them. At least maybe through the slats of your fucking uh, wooden fence or your chain link if you're unfortunate enough to have chain link fences between your yards. Um, so, yeah, I got my pretentious notebook like usual. <coughs> COVID. And, uh, I really want to start, I started on a negative note. That wasn't good. Um, shit, I just hit my camera here. Uh, I started on a negative note, which I try not to do um, much, hopefully, uh, on this podcast. I really try to keep things positive and on a sort of, sort of upswing so people can feel the positivity and the radiance kind of shining through me. Uh, because it is, it is a time for uplifting news. And moments, and, and like I said, positivity. Let the negative drain from your fucking anus. Just let it all filter out through the pores of yourself. And just think about yourself. Have mindfulness, which I think is a good thing to be mindful. And if you can't see this right now, I'm closing my eyes and trying to be mindful. And I have been meditating lately. I wake up and just sit against the wall. I can't really cross my legs because my knee is still fucked up. Um, you know, I just, it's hard to sit, can I say Indian style, um, cross-legged, uh, whatever you want to call it. You can't call it anything. I'll call it, I, I sit like a 41-year-old half-Jewish man. So that's how I sit. Um, and I try to bring my legs together, but I just can't do it fully because my, I still have a torn muscle or, or ligament in my knee. Uh, so I'm taking it slow. But I, I do try to breathe, do breathing exercises, inhale for seven seconds, exhale it out. You know, it feels good. You can feel your cells uh, re rejuvenating, getting rejuvenated. Um, but let, this is where I'm going now, I think. I don't think it's going to be any more anger or piss and vinegar. It's going to be positive ideas. And I want to start with some guru quotes of the day which I find on Facebook and Instagram, they're easy to find. I mean, they're everywhere. Twitter has them, they're all over the place. So if you just guru quote of the day, and I have two of them. Remember who you are. 
And while this horse fly is buzzing around my head, it's a fucking, it's, it's a resident in this garage. Uh, especially when I'm doing this for some reason, it just comes in while I'm fucking trying to do this dumb shit. So remember who you are. This fly doesn't give a fuck, right? This fly doesn't give a shit who it is, but you have to. We're better than them. We're, we're humans. We're not flies. So remember who you are. But I don't know what the fuck that means. That's my problem. I always remember who I am. Um, and then, like, my, my friend, give a shout out to KB over in Arkansas. He was saying that it, it reminds me of who I'm not. And that's true, too. Uh, it's, it's the guilt you have on, on your, your past and the kind of limits of your future. And, you know, remember who you are. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, yeah, of, of course. Why can't, how can't you? Uh, soften or clench. I don't know what that means either. My stool was, my shit was soft this morning. I definitely clenched when I was getting it out. That's a bad, just mediocre fucking shit joke. Um, but, or metaphor. But that's what, I don't know what that means. Soften or clench. I think I've been watching a lot of old UFC fights lately. Uh, just trying to get my aggression up. Get my testosterone going. Testosterone going. Getting my toxic masculinity up. Um, so I've been watching a lot. So that reminds me of that. Clench. The fucking Muay Thai clench. Uh, and which I saw a Muay Thai fight last summer. God, that was, that was a year ago, almost. We went to uh, Thailand, and that was a great night, taking my son to a Muay Thai fight. We saw a lot of clenching going on there. Is that what that means? Soften or clench? See, you guys figure it out, right? That's what gurus do. They pose something that makes no fucking sense whatsoever, and then they let you digest it on social media, and they're like, wow, you are brilliant. Wow, you are more progressive and enlightened than I am. Uh, for whatever reason, that's where it is. And again, I, I'm married kind of to one of these people, which I'm not bashing it. Sounds like I am. I'm not. But maybe I'm just a tad jealous that you guys can see through the shit of society and be mindful of your own nature. Be mindful of your own being. And analyze it. And, you know, try to forget everything shitty you did yesterday but as long as you post this you're probably good um all right let's i got like i said pretentious notebook uh if you can see here if you're just listening you can't see it but i have a patient sticker on there so fucking god damn it i'm a fucking idiot on this thing uh hard to find the camera screen when i'm staring at it patient i was a patient yesterday not covid related uh but as you guys know i'm changing or you don't know, my five subscribers, um, I'm changing career paths. And I'm not really going to, towards a new career right now. I'm just getting out of the one that I had. So no longer a teacher, which is fucking fantastic, but then i got to make money. So I'm getting a physical yesterday uh, for a new job, and I won't mention the company or the name. I'm not, not really fully hired yet. Uh, but I'm getting a physical, which I haven't had a physical for a job in a long, long time. Uh, I haven't had a physical probably in years. I've gone to the doctor for minor things here and there, especially with the knee over the last four or five months, but I haven't really gotten any physical, uh, like to see how the heart's doing, all that other shit. Uh, and it was all right. I got my usual anxious, fucking overly uh, anxiety-filled head beforehand, because I know I have a problem with blood pressure. And I'm not sure if it's actually a problem with blood pressure, but every time I've gone to these doctors, since I've probably been 18, 19 years old, or a dentist, where they take blood pressure, it's just an anxiety-filled moment for me. And I don't un ever understand how people can have that 120 over 80, that sort of federal guideline for health and heart health and blood pressure, diastolic, systolic, uh, how, why is that the number? But I guess that's the average. And whenever I go to these places, it's fucking way above average. I mean, it's off the fucking charts, through the roof, above average. And I know that. And I tell them I have white coat syndrome, which I've been sort of diagnosed with. Uh, so when I've gone to doctors and they've taken my blood pressure, 10 minutes later it goes down. 10 minutes later after that it goes down yet again. And I run high naturally, I think. 
It's because, look at me again, I'm, 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 I'm a hideous creature mentally and physically. So I think that's probably in my brain somewhere of just like, yeah, I'm going to fail this test. I'm going to fail this test. I'm, an anxi I'm, I'm anxious. Uh, first panic attack I had was probably when I was 32, and that was not fun. And I've had them since here and there. I've kind of helped myself calm them down uh, because of my, my guru mental daily uh, mental sayings seances uh, uh and you know it, 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 i've been able to quell them uh but i can't get rid of them in certain moments and i just uh, if you if you have normal blood pressure when you go to the doctor you're fucking something's wrong with you uh you know you get you like to get poked and prodded uh you you like being at the fucking dent you like being stuck in a chair while they're drilling your teeth and with mine they gotta drill my whole fucking skull to make me look any sort of uh, it, like any sort of normal normal human so if you like if you're normal in those situations you're a freak in my mind uh, but i tend to be looked at as a freak i think by the nurses and the doctors and the dental assistants whatever it might be and the dentist him or herself uh is there herself but why do i have to feel like a freak when i go to these places i have yeah i'm fucking anxious i'm sitting in a chair i don't know what you're going to do to me next you're very vague on what you're going to do next. Um, and when I have a physical, I'm feeling like, all right, balls are getting fondled, which is fine. and sounds good. Male or female, it doesn't matter. I'm progressive. Uh, you know, if that's, I have that, but that's not the anxiety. It's, it's almost when the cuff goes on you. and you, The inf, inflation of that blood pressure cuff. I just, I could feel my heart racing. I could feel like I'm going to fucking die. And you can see it in their face, too. Whenever the numbers, bink, flash up on the screen, they're like, ooh, all right. And then I, they never tell you what it is. I have to ask, what was my blood pressure? And they tell me. I'm like, eh, well, yeah, well, that's, that's what it is. And, of course, they're like, well, it was high. Fucking tell me. Where's the secret? Why, why secrecy? You're a fucking, you're, you're working the medical field. If someone is sitting there and like, I'm dying, can you help me? I'm like, well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can help you. Is that what they do? It's like, I have cancer. My, my dick is bleeding. They're like, well, we'll see. Fucking tell me. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me that I have rotten dick. Tell me that I have high cholesterol. Tell me something. They don't say anything. It's like, it's like weird just checking on the list. Uh, and the checklist was hilarious in itself that I had to fill out. The forms I had to fill out beforehand. And they're like, uh, broken bones. Yes. Uh, not at the moment, but broken ribs, yes, uh, in the past. Uh, then I had to say, also cracked chest plate, which I mentioned before, and ad nauseum, broken shoulder, d uh, knees fucked up. You know, so the check, 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 check. Is this just, is this just getting older? Or is this, is this me just breaking down uh, physically? More ear hair, I didn't put that on the fucking checklist, but I'm like, I'm fucking ripping out ear hair by the fucking uh, uh, bundles here. Um, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's, I'm not like a, that hairy old man walking around with a fucking bushel of gray hair in his ear. But, you know, I pull him out, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Nose hair, eyebrow hair is fucking getting longer. I tried to pluck one earlier, but I ended up plucking the ones that are, that are, that are normal. So just getting older sucks. So blood pressure off the, off the charts goes down, of course. But the, the fucked up thing yesterday was the breathalyzer test. They gave me a breathalyzer for the fucking, it's a grunt job that I'm going for. Uh, not to mock grunt jobs, that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm looking for a grunt. I'm looking for no take-home, uh, meaning I'm not grading or stressed out about teaching a bunch of fucking teenagers. Uh, you know, I, just, I could just go and work and make probably decent money. That's what I'm looking for. That's where I'm going for right now, what I'm going for right now. But a breathalyzer, I'm like, all right, I didn't drink. I had drinks the night before, but not a, not a huge excessive amount. And no drinks that morning, which is rare for me. Uh, but no drinks that morning. So I go to the doctor, feeling anxious already. She gives me the breathalyzer. And we're in masks, which is all fucked up. She's in a mask. I probably got COVID at a fucking hospital. To tell you the truth, if I end up getting it in, what, 10 to 14 days, whatever the fucking period is, that you have to wait to get the disease, the virus. Uh, I probably got it from the hospital. But anyways, I have to take my mask down. I blow in this fucking thing. And she's showing me the little meter. And I blow that I've drank alcohol, 0 0.067, or I'm like, what the fuck? And she's like, oh, did you drink this morning? I said, no, I have not drank this morning. It's been 14, 15 hours since I had my last drink. Uh, uh, and did I drink excessively the day before? I, I don't think so. 
but what the fuck? Those monitors don't make sense to me. Uh, those breathalyzers. And this happened years ago when I lived in Humboldt County. And I probably mentioned this again because I fucking repeat myself. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But I got breathalyzed. I got pulled over on a, a total speed trap, in a total speed trap. And I had, luckily, just a few drinks, a couple of beers. And then I blew a .078 at that moment. So that was right close to the limit, of course, of the California federal law, I guess, .08. So he made my wife drive. I think she was my wife at the time. She had a couple beers, just like me. She blew what? Fucking zero. So, again, it seems like I'm repeating myself, but I probably told this story to everybody I know multiple times. She blew zero, and she didn't have her driver's license, but the cop made her drive home. And then I was, back then, I was 24 years old, or whatever I was. I was thinking, like, what the fuck? That doesn't make sense. That, that makes zero sense. And then yesterday, same fucking thing. I'm like, how do I blow near drunkenness, uh, which would be illegal drunkenness, driving a car, when I didn't have anything to drink for the last 14 to 15 hours? Is my blood now just alcohol? Is that what I've done to myself over the last 15 years? Just Is my blood now just reeking of .08? Federal fucking DUI. I'm fu if I get pulled over by a cop not drinking, I'm still fucked. So that was strange. That was a little odd. Uh, and then just the nerves of being in there. Hearing test, eye test, fucking no ball grab, which is disappointing. Um, reflex testing. The fucking strength test is ridiculously stupid. Can you pick that up? And I'm like, yeah, I fucking picked it up. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but it's like I'm lifting up a fucking uh, 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 rice cake. Uh, a bin of rice cakes. And she's like, oh, you're doing good. I'm like, oh, well, this is fucking pretty fucking easy. Uh, so if you failed, I mean, I'm probably going to fail for the blood pressure and the fucking alcohol, but I, I will pass stunningly on the physicality, which I don't understand how people can fail the physical part of a physical. Uh, yeah, I understand there might be some underlying conditions for people, but a fucking physical, like, it's, it was nothing. It's a, doing a curl, uh, doing a fucking uh, uh, upright row, uh, doing a squat, basically, with this weird machine. That doesn't actually move, but it tests the pressure that you have. And, of course, the nurse, oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for making it so easy. I'm like, that was fucking easy. That was the easy part. Just give me that. Don't make me piss in a jar, which I did. And luckily, I haven't smoked weed in a while or done any shrooms that we've got uh, that we, I'm very fr afraid to try. But I didn't do any of those lately. So I did, But I had alcohol in my breath. And it's a fucking alcohol company that I might work for. And if they don't hire me because of that, it's kind of... Hypocritical? Would you agree? Little fucking hypocritical. Um, all right. What else was I getting at? I lost my notes. All right. I gotta go to the fucking. No. Bear with me. I don't have it all on the on the pretentious shit. Do 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 do. Hold on to me. Hold on to you. Vanilla Ice canceled the show. Um in uh, Austin, Texas, and I was trying to think of what I'm going to talk about today. And, you know, the 90s were a fun time, to a certain extent. Um, not the funnest. I mean, I was still fairly young. I graduated in 96. But the 90s seemed good and loose and cool. And then I saw Vanilla Ice talking all this, uh, uh, kind of postering up the 90s, how, how great it was. You know, not, not a lot of cell phone use, no cell phones that we had. You know, the rich people had them in their cars. But no cell phones. We had a fucking AOL, um, you know, in the late 90s, I guess. But early 90s were like, it, it was Beavis and Butthead, right? That was 90, what, 92, 93? I think those are starting to make a comeback. Uh, my friend just told me there's six new episodes of Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix, which I need to watch because I remember watching that on NBC or ABC or whatever the fuck it was back then. Uh, so I think, you know, people are getting nostalgic now. And especially people who are getting older, into their 40s, into their mid-40s, into their 50s. They remember those times of the 80s and the 90s. Freewheeling, concerts, uh, doing shit, getting outside. Um, and, you know, the kids that, we're, that I'm raising right now, they don't understand what that meant. Uh, and they probably won't know in the future at all what that means. Because just everything is getting so fucking... The upheaval has already occurred. It's already part of our life now. You know, the future is fucking diarrhea. The past is shit. And right now, it's just fucking, uh, it's, it's uh, constipation. It's not being able to, it's, it's all over the place. Um, and, you know, people are getting angry. And I think that's what the firecracker thing is a little bit, is that people are just fucking letting steam off. 
uh, you know, uh, uh, letting go a little bit, Fi buying fucking illegal M80s and fucking cherry bombs or whatever it might be and blowing up your fucking uh, high school toilet where the custodian has to go clean all that porcelain and shit up. Uh, at least that's what happened at my high school, I believe, or junior high. You know, people used to throw cherry bombs in the toilet and it would blow it up. I don't know if it blew up the porcelain. That may, might be an over-exaggeration. Uh, but it did something. It fucked something up in the plumbing. That poor fucking fat man, Joe, uh, custodian. And is that gender bias? Yeah, it is. Because, no, it's not. Fuck it, it's not. All custodians that I knew, janitors is what we used to call them, uh, janitors, were they're all males that I knew, right? They, they were all males when I was a kid. Are there female janitors now? Yeah, there is. Are there female truck drivers? My wife and I got in a conversation with that when we were driving back from Taos, back to Roswell, uh, to go back to my parents' place. And we're wondering, you see fucking, of course, on Route 66, all the way through Arizona, New Mexico, all the way back to California, uh, all the way through fucking Oklahoma. You see, off on the 40, basically, I-40, you see trucks constantly, truck drivers. And we're wondering, like, is, there, is there a lot of female truck drivers? There, there has to be. But then the pissing situation has to be weird. And this is completely off the rails. But... If you're a female truck driver, I mean, with a, when you're a dude, and I've done this several times when I do my 14, 15 hour drives in the past, I would like, drink my Gatorade or have some sort of fucking bottle in the car. And that's, after I finished that, I'd fill up that 32 ounce fucking plastic bin with my piss. And I could just whip my hog out and, and try to uh, fucking find, hopefully, when you piss in a car and you don't want to stop, you have to get a container that it has a good whip. The, the, the lid... And the opening where you take a sip from has to have a good width to it, if, or circumference, I guess. So if you don't have a good circumference, and I'm not saying I'm some uh, big cocked man here, uh, uh, no donkey dick, but you know, if you just have an average size wanker, you've you got to fit it in the hole. And like a soda bottle is not going to cut it, because you're going to piss all over yourself. So Gatorade bottle, I recommend. And that's not the white power sign I'm doing, that's the, that's the o OK sign now. Um, that's OK. So I'm not racist. I, I don't believe in white power. Uh, I'm half Jewish, so that gets me off that list, right? Um, but the AOK -OK symbol, that might be going away, to, or I think that's been chastised as well. Uh, but we still have it as an emoji, though. We have an eggplant emoji, speaking of dicks. Um, yeah, are there women truckers? I don't know. So I think there, there's got to be. So if there's women truckers out there that listen, which you don't, um, and male truckers for that matter either, um, how do you piss? Do you, I mean, do you have to stop more than the average bear? Um, and then is there something, is there, is there a tool that you can use? Do you wear diapers? Do women, men wear diapers when they're truck driving? That's oh, an inter interesting job. Maybe I'll do that. You know, it would be a trucker. Fuck it. Uh, it's not, it seems all right. Just driving. You don't have to worry about anybody for 18, 19, 20 hours while you're on the road, however long you're traveling. It sounds, doesn't, it sounds fucking decent. Um, but why can't we talk about those things anymore? Oh, yeah, we're pussies. We're fucking pussies. Toughness is dead. Uh, uh, I think masculinity is dead. Maybe fem femininity. Is there a, is there a equivalent to a female splaining? Uh, I know there's mansplaining. Um, I know there are men who are, who are toxic and need help from women. Uh, is there a female splaining? There's got to be. I mean, female explain a lot of shit, right? That you don't want to know. So if you're a regular hetero, or not regular, that's the wrong word too. If you happen to be a heterosexual a man, uh, and you're in a relationship with a female, uh, if, she, if she so chooses to go by the identity of being a female, then you've probably been female-splained before, femsplained. And it's, I don't know what that, is it, is it the same? I had to have my wife talk to me about what, what mansplaining is. And yeah, I don't know about periods. I don't know what it's like to be pregnant. I don't know about fucking breast tender issues when you're when you're breastfeeding your child. I don't know any of that. Uh, but I'm sure mansplaining is, is deeper than that. But I just I I'm too stupid to know what it is. Uh, but I know there's got to be an equivalent that that hasn't been uh, uh, explored, hasn't been cultivated, uh, uh, hasn't been harvested. Then cult. I don't know. Is that the same thing? Harvested and cultivated. I don't know. There's got to be a fucking female explain explanation of shit. When there's a female who might be of an older generation who says like, Ah, Josh can do it. He's a man. That is that female explaining. I don't want to go under a fucking house and deal with electricity, or wires, or plumbing. I don't know how to do any of that shit. 
But when I have someone say, well, he could do it. He's a man. He's got to know how to do it. Then that's, to my mind, female explaining it a little bit. And, and it's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's dual-sided. It has both-sided. It's a both-sided problem going on because there's two of us, right? There's a male and a female. If you want to argue with that, it's completely fine. But the world I live in with my relationship, it's a male and a female. And we both know we're male. Hopefully I am. At, at least that's what I associate with. And then my wife's a female. Uh, so we have those issues and those problems between us. We, and we've known each other for 20 years. 20 fucking years. We're going to have those problems. Um, and I think she just got back. She went to go pick up some uh, chicken waffle sandwiches. That's what we're having tonight. Chicken waffle sandwiches from a local place because that's what we do. Uh, we're we're community-oriented, even though we're not from this community. Uh, I haven't lived here that long. But we want to give back to the people. So see how good we are? See how good I am? Do you see how righteous I am? I'm going to put that later on, on uh, Twitter and Facebook. If you don't eat local, you're a fucking cunt. If you don't eat local, you're against humanity. Uh, but we did. We are eating local. So waffle chicken sandwich. Hopefully it's good. It's got some apple slaw on it. Sounds all right. I don't know if the, the blending of the two goes together well. I know a lot of people love chicken and waffles. I never really totally understood it, but I kind of see the saltiness and the, and the sweetness of it. But I don't think they put maple syrup on the waffles. I think it's just fucking a waffle as the bread. Which sounds all right. Sounds delectable. Uh, the Washington Redskins say they're changing their name. Um, they've said that for since I was a kid. Probably before that. Well, not probably not before that because it wasn't a thing. Uh, but the Washington Redskins are, of course, under uh, going through flack, I'm sure, right now. Uh, I'm sure the Indians, the Cleveland Indians, the baseball team, will go through it next. Have they changed? No, they're not. I don't know if they should. I don't know if they will. I, I called it. I fucking called it last time, I think. Columbus, Ohio. If I refer to my last podcast and stupid video, I think I mentioned something about Columbus, Ohio, that they're going to change the name of Columbus. But they didn't change the name yet, but they tore down the statue of Columbus, which I've never been to Ohio. Uh, I didn't even know they had a fucking statue of Columbus. I didn't even know. I kind of assumed it was named after him, uh, the explorer, uh, the ravenous uh, tyrant, which he probably was, obviously. Uh, everybody was back then, but I, I just saw they tore the statue down. I'm like, oh, fuck, I called it. See, I'm smarter than you. That's it. That's, that's all it comes down to. I'm smarter than everybody. I, for, I can see the future. So Panopticon is the future. And the Panopticon has always been there, but now it's even more so. And the Panopticon has become ourselves. We have become our own watchdogs. We no, no, no longer need that tower in the middle of the prison to watch all of us. Right? We no longer need the shimmering glass or the, uh, or, or the reflective glass that we can't see if anybody is a actually watching us. We've done it to ourselves. Now we're over-policing ourselves. We're over-watching ourselves. We are now the Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon theory that Michel Foucault in the 80s wrote a bunch of books about. Or at least a few books about fucking crime and punishment, discipline and punishment, the whole fucking Milgram theory, the experiments that Milgram did in the late 60s. Uh, we, you know, will we curb ourselves to a certain extent? Will we hurt a human to a certain level? Yeah, we will. But we might stop ourselves, but right now we're policing ourselves. And with the Redskins doing it, I think it's all fucking false. It's all false. It does, uh, Dan Snyder, I think, is the name. He's a fucking billionaire. Uh, he makes the uh, Chargers owners, fucking goddamn dolts, that I still follow, even though they left the city of San Diego. Um, what, what, who am I going to root for? The fucking Raiders? Uh, they're a bunch of pillagers and rapists. Uh, not the players, but the, the team name. Um, but the Redskins, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a problem. Uh, it's, it's probably not culturally appropriate. It's racist. I mean, that's, that, but it's been around for a long, long time. And what are you going to change it to now? Which I think it's fine to change the fucking name of the Redskins. I could care less. I'm not a Redskins fan. I'm not a Cleveland Indians fan. Uh, but it, again, it's a name. And I'm sure some people are up in arms about getting it changed. But what is that going to change? This, this sounds like the same fucking rant I did last time. Nothing will change. So Dan Snyder and the fucking, his uh, constituents are just wanting to change the name just to save face in this moment of time. 
uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement going on, with all this other protesting going on and shit, politics and a fucking upheaval, he's just trying to save face. And he just wants to make money. So if he can make more money by changing the name from Washington Redskins to the Washington Cuntballs, uh, Washington f Democrat Republican fucking Red Stained Party, uh, I don't, what are you going to call him? Uh, another friend of mine, ah, we should just stick with animals. But even animals are fucked in the names. Uh, I'm sure they're culturally appropriate. The Chicago Bears? Is there any fuck? Is there a bear that lives in fucking uh, Chicago? I don't think so. I'm sure there's bears in Illinois, but is I don't know. I really actually don't know. Uh, Seattle Seahawks makes sense. Um, uh, the Bengals? I don't think the, did Cincinnati ever have a fucking Bengal living there? Maybe maybe in the prehistoric times. Maybe in uh, fucking uh, Pangaea, when, you know, all the continents were still together. Maybe that, yeah, maybe there was some fucking Bengals in the present day Cincinnati. I don't know. Chargers, I have no fucking clue what that means. Is that against PG&E workers? Or SD, and, is that against electric, electricians? The Chargers? Bolt up? They bolt up, baby. You know, the people who get electrocuted could be triggered by that. Uh, no, that's no pun intended. But if... Yeah, I don't know. You could make it with anything. When I was a kid, Green Bay Packers, we called them the fucking Fudge Packers. Um, was that? But we also played Smear the Queer, which right now, if we ever said that, which I just did, I can totally get canceled and not get a job. But that's what we played when we were kids. Smear the Queer. We had the fucking uh, Green Bay Fudge Packers. I wore a San Francisco... Uh, for, I was a 49er fan when I was a kid in Southern California because, one, the Chargers sucked, and I was a fucking... I was a front runner. I was a bandwagon kid, like all kids were. I liked the Miami Hurricanes, who were a bunch of fucking murderers, which it came out later. Was all, every fucking Miami uh, football player committed a, some crime at some point. Uh, but I was a big fan of theirs because they were good back then. I had my parka, even though I lived in fucking Southern California, and we did never rarely needed a fucking thick parka, and it probably cost my parents more debt to buy me that said parka. But I had a 49ers nice starter jacket. Right, nice glossy starter jacket, big SF patch on the back, 49ers on the breast, lapel. I guess I can't say breast because I'm a man, but on the on the lapel, even though I'm about to eat a waffle chicken breast sandwich, but they would call me, oh, you're a faggot, 49er faggot. I remember getting called that by friends of mine, just people at school. Ah, fuck it, you must be a faggot. You must be queer because you like the 49ers. I'm like, I didn't really totally understand the association when I was 10, 11 years old. Now I get it, right? And I've been to San Francisco several, several times, lived not far from there. Now it makes sense why they call me that. It doesn't make it right. It's still fucking a uh, 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 slander. And it's still wrong to call people who like a sports team that. But we have it with sports all over the place. Sports people don't care. They don't give a shit what, what a sports team is named. They just care that they can go watch the team, drink their fucking livers out, Fucking a, a, a puke beer foam before you go into the stadium, which I've done before. That's all we want, right? It, it's no politics. Sport, sports isn't political, or it shouldn't be. It's just sports. And there's people that get along at a Redskins game, right? There's people who get along at a Fudge Packer game. There's people who get along at the Vikings game. Are they going to take away Vikings now? That's my, that's half of me. I was a pillager. I, I come from that pillaging, rape, rapey, fucking, uh, very masculine culture, which I'm sure the women even fucking wreaked havoc with their goddamn fucking centaurs and double-sided axe, like fucking Golden Sword. Or what was that video game? Golden Axe. Gold, golden fucking Axe. I was always a Viking, little fucking Viking dwarf uh, in Golden Axe. If you guys remember that fucking video game from the 7-Elevens back in the day. Um, but... Yeah, are they going to take Vikings away? Yeah, they do the fucking Skull, Skull, I don't know their fucking chant song, but Skull, it's like, yeah, cheers, which I'm going to cheers now, to the Vikings. But are we going to take that, is that, that's a name that's very white, very culturally specific, and not always fully accurate, not every Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish person is a fucking uh, pillaging, raping person uh, who wreaks havoc. On, on the fucking culture they're trying to take over and the land they're trying to seize. That's not accurate, but was it historically accurate? Yeah, there's a lot of fucked up, badass Vikings out there. Uh, and it's like, oh, Josh, you just say pillaging and raping and, 
and uh, seizing territory is is badass. No, I'm not. I'm not. But if you're gonna call, if you're gonna give a tag to the Vikings, I would call them kind of a badass individual, badass culture, strength in numbers kind of shit. And they fucked up. They wreaked fucking havoc. And again, just go to all the names: baseball, basketball. They changed the fucking Washington Bullets to the Wizards. So when I heard that, that was because of the violence. It, maybe it was the violence going on in fucking Washington, D.C. Isn't that, a, isn't that amazing? That now we're having another controversy and ha have it for decades now over the team name of the fucking capital of this country. So we had the Redskins. Then we had the Bullets. Then they had to change their name to the Wizards? The fucking Wizards? Where's Gandalf and all this shit? Is he, uh, is he feeling negated? Is he feeling disenfranchised? Because now... He's associated with a basketball team? The fucking, the Grand Wizards even? I remember when they first got called the Wizards, I'm like, Jesus Christ, doesn't the KKK have like something called the Grand Wizard? Or the Dragon? Grand Dragon? But even the fucking Dragons. San Diego Aztecs. Again, my wife's alum. Um, San Diego Aztecs. They had to change their, uh, their mascot. He had to be more culturally Aztecian? Uh, Aztecan? Uh, because it was too much. He had head feathers and shit like that. You know, it was too, it was too Indian, I guess, at that moment. And again, I don't know any of this. I'm so unaware of the world, uh, of, of what that means in terms of, like, racism, things. Like that. See, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm ignorant. But it, it doesn't mean I'm dumb. It just means it's, it, we're, we've changed quite a bit over the course of the last 30, 40, 50 years. And now we're changing even more so. Where I'm, I'm not sure if it's doing anything. Is it doing more harm than good? And there's a lot of people saying, no, it's doing more good. But we're still fucked up. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of good change happening from any of this over the last four months. I think the positivity will come eventually. Um, but why can't we just watch football together? Uh, yeah, change the name. Go ahead. Who cares? They're still going to associate themselves with the Washington Redskins because that's the lineage that the team has. Uh, Cleveland Indians are still going to do the fucking, uh, the, the, they, I guess that might have been a major league, the fucking movie, but where, where they bang the drums in the outfield. Uh, the fucking tomahawk chop for the Atlanta Braves when they won the World Series. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, and everybody was doing it in the crowd. Everybody of all different races and mixes of cultures. They were all doing it because they were all there for the same fucking thing. To see the team that they follow and the city that they probably live in win. And it helped amp up the environment. It helped amp up the, the players and the team who were also of different races and cultures, ethnicities, religions, demographics. Yeah, all, make mil all making millions of dollars on the team. But they came from all different places. So why now is it just a fucking thing to... to complain about and it's about me too because i'm complaining about people fucking throwing fireworks it's fourth of july i'm still complaining about my oh, fucking assholes these fucking goddamn motherfuckers throwing firecrackers at three in the morning outside their doors and they're not even right next door they're way in the distance and i can't see them bursting i can't see the fucking sparkles and all that shit that some uh frat boy who's not going to school anymore right now because can't, uh, college has been canceled uh, sticking a fucking sparkler up his ass. And I like fireworks. I'm not against them. When I lived in Arkansas, I spent 50, 60 bucks one time going through a tent after work at 11 o'clock at night. Probably half buzz on stolen whiskey and beer that I took from the restaurant. And in a bar that I, that was a bartender at. And, you know, I stopped at a little small country fucking area. Went to the tent. Bought a bunch of fucking fireworks. Called my friend up. Let's go light these bitches up. And we did. And me and him sat under a bridge by a muddy river in the south and just fucking released $150 worth of fireworks. Because he spent a lot of money on it as well. Fucking getting goddamn rockets, bottle rockets zip, uh, zipping past our head, fucking shit flying all over the place, things going in the... I mean, we, we, we're idiots. And that was in, you know, in my 20s. My youth. And that was fun. So I'm, I'm talking shit now about people having fun that I did. And I'm sure there's people who live near there, even though it was in the middle of fucking nowhere. I'm sure there's people hearing us popping off these firecrackers, but they're used to it because it's the South and you can do firecrackers in the South. And maybe I've just become too Californian again. Maybe I've just become this Californian douchebag where you hear any noise that I'm not making 
and some other people are, and I get offended. So maybe that's where I'm at now. Maybe I've become too progressive. Maybe I've become too liberal. Maybe I'm going to enjoy this chicken waffle sandwich with apple slaw and sm a spicy p a tomato jam, and I'll think about all these other people who are not privileged enough or savvy enough to order from a local restaurant, who don't have the wherewithal and the heart and the communal feeling, the softening or clenching of your soul, remembering who you are. And if you don't have that, then you don't deserve a chicken waffle sandwich with apple slaw and spicy tomato jam, all sourced from local organic products. You don't deserve it. You just don't deserve it. And you should just die. That's it. Let the COVID take you. Go to a movie theater. Go to a bar that's still going to stay open. Go to a strip club in Portland where you can, they can give you takeout. Just go and breathe in. Breathe in. I don't know. Is that what we should? Maybe we should just all breathe in. But maybe not. Maybe we should just all stop breathing altogether. Maybe that's the point I'm, uh, I'm going towards. Um, I'm drinking out of the Yeti. You can't see it here. But this, this episode is sponsored by Sierra Nevada. And of course, not really. But it's my sponsor. And I'm drinking the limited edition Hoppy Anniversary Ale. And it's a hop forward beer. 6%. Uh, showcases bold flavors. And the aromas of a classic West Coast IPA. Intense pine and citrus with a deep gold color and slight caramel sweetness. Here's to following your passion and to the next 40 years. So see Sierra Nevada gets it. Family owned company, still thriving, on sale at your local Safeway or Vaughn's for $11.99. I almost take, took a drink out of this one. It's still capped. Uh, so you guys have a good 4th of July. I'm gonna spend it with my family. We're gonna go kayaking. And we're just going to be Americans for a little while and not worry about this shit. Get off social media. Don't be a guru. Don't be a tough guy. Follow the middle of the road sometimes. Go for the middle. Middle is a fucking cozy place. Way left, way right. Not cozy. Anger. Middle's the way to go. Right? Just, it'll fucking, it'll lower my blood pressure. Probably not. Especially when I'm going to get my fucking dick tip. Uh, cotton swabbed out, um, or whatever, whatever else they're gonna fondle, and they'll look at me weird over their masks. The nurses and the doctors, of their, their eyes will be judging me because my high blood pressure and my imminent death, apparently. But 20 minutes later, normal, fairly normal blood pressure. Um, so yeah, fuck them, fuck the medical industry of, of the blood pressure mandates. Um, but God bless them at the same time. Positivity, Josh. Remember who you are. Clench, release your, soften your cream, what was it? Soften your, or clench. Um, let your, let your bad juju vibes, and that wasn't racist, I said juju. Um, J-U-J-U, -J -U, I think. Uh, let that come out of your pores, like softened cream cheese on a fucking muffin top. I don't know anymore. All right, I'm going to go drink this and eat my waffle sandwich. Good 4th of July. Happy. Happy 4th of July. All right. Go America.